Hi, I'm Kathleen. Welcome to Koi Art Cafe. So I'm really excited for today's studio vlog. I just received a package from Sticker Mule and I wanted to review their acrylic pins really quick. So if you guys are considering investing in their pins, uh, please keep watching to see the pros and cons of each. I also reviewed their acrylic charms as well if you guys are curious in my last studio vlog. So starting off with first impressions, I was really surprised by the quality. It was a really good print quality, especially for this size. I also tested the backing. I tried to pull it off to see like how sturdy it was. And I was really surprised. It was actually hard to remove the pin backing unlike some other reviews. So I recommend if the backing does come off for whatever reason, you can always apply resin or super glue. Now the color quality was really great. It was very accurate to my tablet. And now I'm gonna compare the rest of the charms. I did get 10 at a promotion price. I was notified by email and was really happy with the quality. Now to remove the protective film, um, they did a really good job keeping the pins from getting scratched and damaged. Unlike my charms, um, all 10 of them came out perfect actually. <laughs> Now to list some of the cons, um, if you turn this on the side, you might see that the edges are a little bit rough. They're not very smooth cut, but I mean for the price, I can't really complain. Also the back is not protected at all by acrylic, but I don't really mind since when you pin this on a purse or a bag, that side isn't really exposed anyway. I also wish they had a rubber clasp option instead of a metal one. Now comparing with and without the protective film, you can definitely tell there is a slight color difference, so make sure you remove the protective film. And if I had to rate these charms on a scale of 1 to 10, and 10 being the best, I'd rate it a solid 7. For the price, it's a really good quality and great pin. And now I'd like to show a little bit of how I package these for my Etsy shop. If you guys want to see how much I sell these for and how I advertise them, you can check out the description for my Etsy shop and my Instagram. Now while I package these, I do feel like it's a pretty self-explanatory process. So while this is recording, I'll be going over a small Q&A that I asked you guys on Instagram. Also, if you guys are curious, I got these backing cards from Vista Print. They are the 2.5 inch square card. And I'm just attaching the pin over a piece of foam. Alright, so the first question was asked by Space Cadet Val, and she asked me, what inspired you to start selling at conventions? Well, I first started learning about conventions through my day job, actually. So as you guys know, I am only a part-time artist, and I actually work at a martial arts school in the day. So, one time we were taking our students to a competition, and in front of the arena area, they had like a bunch of tables set up with people selling like martial arts merch. And I remember this one table, I think they were called Opang Official, I'm not sure, it was a Korean brand. Um, they were selling these really cute Taekwondo buttons and I thought they were so cool and I was like, I really want to make that for my own martial arts school. I think the students would love that. <laughs> so I remember going home and researching how to make buttons and I found out about this Artist Alley 101 blog, I think. And that's when I started learning about artist alleys and being a vendor and it just looks so much fun. I started following vlogs on YouTube and really wanted to try it for myself. So then I kind of came up with Koi Art Cafe, made a bunch of anime merch, and that's kind of how I started selling at conventions. Okay, next question. Claire Marie 144 asked, what's your favorite part of art and selling on Etsy? So my favorite part of art is definitely bringing it to life. I love making illustrations and then creating them into products. It's so cool seeing my artwork on like notebooks, pins, prints, and stickers. And my favorite part of selling on Etsy is definitely the packaging. It's like Christmas all year round. I love packaging orders. It's like packaging gifts for your friends every single day. So I really enjoy it. And I love cute packaging and opening a really adorable gift. So, yeah, that's my favorite part. <laughs> and the pins are done. I think they turned out pretty cute. <laughs> 
And next, I'm going to show you behind the scenes on how I make these Alice in Wonderland shaker charms. So just showing how to prepare the resin and then pouring it into a silicone mold. I thought it was really cute that it's a pocket watch, kind of like Alice's white rabbit. <laughs> I've been obsessed with shaker charms lately, and I was really surprised that this is actually one of my most popular products on my shop. So you can also find these on my Etsy. Sharing right here, once the resin cured, we're just demolding it, which is honestly my favorite part. It's so satisfying to watch it come out of the mold. And then this footage here kind of shows how we make the Mad Hatter Shaker Charm. So we're just including some resin stars and hearts and some glitter. Or is this confetti? I'm not sure. <laughs> but we do like to fill it with a ton of glitter. I think it's so cute when it's extra spar sparkly. And then some tinsel. And then cover it with a protective film. Now this isn't really a tutorial. This is more like just showing a work in progress on behind the scenes of how these shaker charms are made. They are a lot of work, but they're definitely worth it. If you guys couldn't tell, uh, the reason why the hands are different is this is actually my mom recording. She works for me for my shop and she helped me make some of these charms while I'm at my day job. So they're just applying some UV resin, and then we just use a nail light to cure the resin a little bit faster. And once the plastic film is on, you just inject it with some baby oil, which is just so satisfying, right? <laughs> and then once it's sealed, this is what it looks like. So pretty. <laughs> And then I'm actually using my Alice in Wonderland stickers from my sticker sheets on my shop. You can purchase these individually by just applying them on and then doming the front so that it has a nice smooth finish. And after adding on the keychain part, this is the final result. And next, I'll be showing you guys the full process on how I make this plain claw machine into a super kawaii cute one for my artist alley booth. I thought it would be a fun way to kind of win merch and make it a game for people as they wait at my table. So the first thing I do is I open up the top and I fill it with a bunch of my merch. So buttons, I use little easter eggs filled with papers for certain prizes. And then I made a little tent canopy that matches my tent for my shop. <laughs> I thought it was super cute. I actually used the same fabric. And then I thought the gray was kind of boring, so I created some holographic stickers and regular stickers to decorate. So I have a $2 to play and a $5 to play as like informative. That's how much it costs to, for one churn. And I just made these stickers at home with my logo and design. I think it just makes it so much cuter. <laughs> and then I have a Win Cute Prizes sticker. And a You Win sticker. I think these definitely make a huge difference on the color for the claw machine. I was thinking of painting it, but realized that maybe it would chip in the long run, so I ended up doing these laminated stickers so that it lasts a little bit longer. And then I'm decorating the sides with more prizes and local work. I figured this would be a fun game to do on my booth to help attract customers and just make it a more fun experience, honestly. <laughs> I love claw machines. I love watching claw machine videos, so... I just put a couple of my merch in there. And after applying the stickers, I thought the back was a little plain, so I made a win cute prizes picture to show what kind of prizes you can win from the eggs and what's at the bottom. 
So I just taped this cardstock piece of paper on the back and this is what it looks like. And then I made some resin tokens just to fit the pastel aesthetic. And then I took the canopy off and decided to add some lights. So I did include some fairy lights and like taped it on the top. They are battery operated so that it's more well lit. I'll probably get some cool light ones instead of the warm light. But this is what it looks like. And then I made another one that I'll show in just a moment. I think the second one turned out so much cuter just because it already had pastel colors as a base. And then we added some crochet whales in there. So here's a close up of the stickers and how we decorated it. I love claw machines. I think they're just so fun. And if you guys are wondering where I got these from, I actually bought these both from the Facebook marketplace from people around me. So I got these for really cheap. But if you guys are looking for these, I think they're also available on Amazon as well. Thank you to my Kofi supporters. If you guys like extra rewards, please visit my Kofi page. Alright, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!